In this video, we're going to introduce the concept of buffers. And buffers are really, really important um, because so many things in biology are buffered. Basically, the human body has uh, several different buffer systems, including the bloodstream, which is buffered to a pH that's slightly basic. Um, and that buffer system is incredibly important to you know many biochemical processes. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to define a buffer. So a buffer is a solution that contains either a mixture of a weak acid and its conjugate base. So we have uh, HA and A minus, or a base, B, and its conjugate acid, HB. So um, whether we have a conjugate acid and its base or a weak base and its conjugate acid, those two things have to be present together in the solution at appreciable concentrations, meaning at almost sim relatively similar concentrations. So for example, if we have a weak acid, like in this equation here, um, if we were to have 0 0.1 molar HA and 0 0.1 molar A minus, that would be uh, a good example of a buffer solution. Now, what do buffers do? And why are they important to biological life? So buffers, what they do is they resist changes uh, in pH. And they do this because they have a mixture of both acid and base in the same solution. So they regulate, they, they're going to regulate the concentration of the H3O plus and the OH minus. So let's say by accident we, we have a buffer solution and we add a little bit of NaOH. What would, what's going to happen to that buffer solution? So if you were to add a little bit of NaOH by accident to your buffer solution, what's going to happen is that NaOH is going to immediately react with the acid that's present, right? So if we're adding a base and we have acid present, our acid is HA. And so that HA is going to immediately react with that OH minus. And it's going to get rid of the strong base so the strong base is going to immediately react with the, the weak acid to be converted into A minus and a little bit of water. So we get rid of that strong base and we convert it into a weak base. And so that is going to greatly reduce the effect on the pH because we're getting rid of the strong base and we're converting it into a weak base. And weak bases are not as strong as strong bases, so that's going to minimize the effect, on the, uh, the effect of that, that strong base on the pH. Now, how did I know that HA was going to react with the OH minus? Well, there's two possibilities, and we kind of talked about this in another video. So HA is kind of happily sitting in there reacting with water. That's the only other base present. So when you have your buffer solution, the only thing that you have is you have the HA, the A, the A minus, and you have uh, the water and the H3O plus. But the, it turns out that the H3O plus is really not uh, terribly relevant at this point. So there are two bases, though, and that's why it's not terribly relevant. Uh, and one is the strong base that we accidentally add, and the other one is the water that's there. So when you add that strong base, it's go it, that's the strongest base of all, so it's going to react with your acid present, which is HA. Okay, and so what if we were to add a little bit of the H HCl accidentally? So we go kind of go, oops, we put a little HCl in, what's going to happen? Well, immediately our weak base that's hanging around in that solution is going to react with the HCl, and it's going to convert that into HA aqueous and H2O liquid. So our strong base gets converted into, uh, I'm sorry, our strong acid gets converted into a weak acid um, by the A minus. So in essence, what's happening is is the equi the equivalent the equ the equilibrium is compensating for these uh, these additions by shifting the equilibrium. So rather than having a dramatic change in pH, the equilibrium is shifting and balancing that out. So when you add a bit of base, the equilibrium shifts to the right, and when you add a bit of acid, it shifts to the left. And those equilibrium shifts, according to Le Chatelier's principle, balance out the change in pH. So there are two properties of buffers that are important. The first one is the pH range. The pH range is the range in pH where the buffer operates. And by operates, I mean 
when you set it up with the concentration of HA and A minus, there's going to be a finite range of pH where that buffer can actually work and exist as a buffer. Uh, and it turns out that this is dependent on Ka. And when we derive the Henderson-Hasselbach equation, which we're going to do in a couple minutes, you'll see why uh, that this is the case. And it's because the sort of the buffer range, the fundamental buffer range is, is determined by the Ka. And then you modify the... Um, you modify the pH by changing the relative amounts of A minus and HA. So we're going to see this in Henderson-Hasselbach. And the other one that we're interested in is buffer capacity. And buffer capacity is basically the amount of strong acid or base you can add before you get an appreciable change in the pH. So that's what that's what buffer capacity is. Basically, how um, how much can this buffer act to balance out any additions of strong acid or strong base? And this is dependent on the concentrations of H A and A minus. So as you increase the concentrations of H A and A minus, the buffer capacity will go will go up. So for example, if you create a buffer with 0 0.1 molar and 0 0.1 molar H A and A minus, that will have a certain buffer capacity, but if you were to increase those to one molar, that would have a much larger buffer capacity because there's more acid and base in there to react with something that you add.